Number one was what? We forgot. Especially those who didn't have breakfast and didn't sleep well. Number one, never despair. Never despair. Abu Tawil, huh? Who did everything. No? Okay, number two. Uh, number two. Hmm? To leave the sin spontaneously, immediately. Okay, number three. Sahaba never justified their sins. Never defended them. Never argued for it. Sahaba immediately confessed. Sahaba never said we live in a non-Muslim country. Those bunch of mushriks and kuffars because they lived in Mecca. Never justified their sins. Sahaba so, sorry to use the expression, naked people go around the Kaaba, but they lowered their gaze, not saying, oh, I'm sorry, we just live in a very corrupt society, you are bound to look and watch. They never justified. There is a difference, brothers and sisters, very important, no joke here. There is a difference in you saying that at that context, at that moment, I was defeated by shaitan, I was defeated by my desire. And intel intellectualizing and arguing and institutionalizing and legitimizing the action itself. There is a difference. And to me, saying I committed a mistake, I am sorry, is far more healable than if someone begins to intellectualize because that is as if he is normalizing what he did and he himself accepts it. So smoking is bad for you. Yes, I know, but uh, it makes me cool. Drugs is, uh, yeah, but you, don't, you, have, you have not seen, I was abused in childhood, I grow in poverty, I am addicted to it, I have uh, all these problems that if I didn't take the whatever, one, two, three things will happen to me, it makes me be, live in a wonderful cuckoo land world, justifying, justifying, justifying. Sahaba never justified. Okay, let's, there is a companion called Abu Mas'ud. Al-Ansari. Ansari because he's from Ansar. And his name is Abu Mas'ud. Once he was beating up his boy, slave boy. Beating and beating and beating. And suddenly he heard a voice behind him saying, Lallahu aqdaru alayka min hadha al Allah is more powerful on you than your power on this boy. So whatever, it's, and this is very good for Husbands that beat up their wives. Okay, you beat her because she's weak. Let's bring this Al Shnawaz nigga muscular and let's see what he will do with you. Okay, let's bring, let's see what Allah will do with you. Abu Mas'ud immediately looks, turns, and it's the Prophet. And he straight away says, Ya Rasulullah, a'taqtuhu li wajhillah. Ya Rasulullah, he's free. He's free to leave. Okay, now let's stop here and capture this moment. If, I, if it was me, I don't want to say if it was you. There is certainly a good reason for why he is beating up the boy. We can't see an angry companion who prays day and night with the Prophet and suddenly creating injustice. So certainly let's at least establish that the boy did something wrong that justifies this hard beating. He might have stolen, he might have harassed a girl, he might have done something that is extremely bad to justify. And that at least should have been explained to the Prophet. So that the Prophet does not take a bad image or a negative image on you that labels you as a, um, a terrorist or as a, 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 a temp temperamental or as aggressive or as violent. After all, he's the Prophet. For God's sake, if he was a sheikh watching you in the city center doing something that you have to at least say, uh, Sheikh, yani I am with my family, by the way, they just went to this shop to do shopping. At, at least to, to, to do something so that that Sheikh does not for a minute, a fraction of a second. Yet he didn't. Abu Mas'ud didn't. And something else very interesting. Al Rasul, what did he say? He didn't say anything, did he? He didn't say, wow, how dare you beat him up? He just said, he just said, Allah is more powerful on you. 
which is true whether you beat the boy up or you don't beat him, right? Thirdly, thirdly, he never asked you to liberate the boy. He never asked you to leave him, set him free. If anything, if anything, he just asked you or insinuated that you back off and do not continue beating. But that is the extent of the response of Abu Mas'ud. That number one, you don't argue, you don't justify. Number two, you immediately do something about it.